Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Yesterday was the Iowa State Hand Corn Husking Competition. We had over 40 some pickers yesterday, which is a big growth from where we first started three years ago when we restarted the Iowa competition. And today, those who finished first, second, or third yesterday in their age group qualify to pick at the national competition, which we're holding here in Amana, Iowa today. Those to next year, the uh, national will be in Indiana. But today, we've got pickers from at least nine states. I know there's pickers from Oklahoma, Mississippi, Alabama, and Michigan, for sure, that are not affiliated with the national, which is a nine state organization. The nine states are Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Ohio. Those are the nine states involved in the national organization. So we're going to have at least 12 or 13 pickers from different states today. You've got a lot of different trophies up there on the trailer. There's lots of different categories people pick in. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. 14 and below, all the way up to 75 and above. And then we have the open class. The open class is the best of the best, both men and women. So it's just somebody, something for everybody. Normally you have a hook on your hand, which is attached to a piece of leather. You grab the ear, you come across it with the hook, you rip as it opens up the, the, the cob, pull the husk away here, you twist that ear and you throw it into the wagon. Then that's how, and then you go to the next one, you just keep going. Are they looking where they're throwing the corn? The, no, you're not supposed to, it slows you down. The ultimate goal is just toss it. Basically you keep your arms in, when you pick it, it's just a flick of the wrist is how it's supposed to be. Did you grow up on a farm, David? No, sir. I grew up in the city, helped my grandfather on the farm many years ago, and I actually helped him pick corn by hand. We'd fill the buckets, then we'd fill the wagon, then we'd shovel it into the bins. He had three or four acres that uh, normally uh, we pick by hand. Where was that? Uh, down in Liberty, Illinois. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, uh, Chuck and Holt is going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And then uh, we'll do a prayer and uh, we'll start picking. Okay, let's uh, be loud. Let's all say a pledge of allegiance to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, bow for a word of prayer, please. Father, we, we just thank you for uh, being here. We just thank you, Sunday, a day of rest, a day of having fun together here. Lord, would, we just pray that uh, all we think, say, and do would glorify you, Father, and we'll thank you for it all. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Well, I'm Jim Stewart from New Virginia, and uh, I've had horses since uh, 1988. Uh, live on a 60 acre farm, small farm, work in town. But uh, I try to do everything I can with the horses, mow the hay and plow a little, plant a little corn, and pick corn by hand. And, and we go to a few shows, and parades, that type of thing throughout the year. I belong to a couple of associations here in Iowa and, and we tr try to promote draft horses. Do you raise your own horses? Do yes. You buy them? Do you raise yep. them? Okay. So you have foals every year mostly? I have bought three teams, I think, in my time, and uh, I've raised them, most of them since, and I think I've had 60 or 80 horses on the place in the 25 years I've been at it. So. Did your dad have horses? You have yes, my dad bought his, his, he had horses when he was a kid. He farmed with horses, and uh, in 84, he bought a team. Went to a Thresh and B one day, uh, one year, and, and really liked it. We had quarter horses when, when I was a kid, 
And uh, we got out of that and, and dad they went to a threshing bee and, and seen the drafts there and thought, boy, he'd like to get into that. So he bought a team of, uh, they were right off the mares, five months old. We had them in harness within a month. And uh, every day all winter long, we hooked them two to a little two-wheeled cart and put two bales of hay in it, go out and feed sheep. But we hitched them every day. They was a very well broke team. They won the obstacle course up at the state fair five years in a row or something when he had them. So very well broke team. I belong to the South Central Iowa Draft Horse and Mule Association and the Iowa Draft Horse and Mule Breeders Association. Uh, the South Central Association is located around centrally in, uh, in Osceola, Iowa. And uh, when I started there, I think we had like seven teams within a five mile radius of, of where I lived. And it's a very active club. Um, the state club, we meet twice a year. And because it's uh, more diverse as far as area, it's harder for us to get together and do things. But the South Central group's pretty active. We have plow days and, and sponsor a couple shows every year and put on clinics. So pretty active club. What do you think is one of the things that makes that club successful? Well, I mean, we all get along pretty good and uh, we enjoy the same things. Um, and we have enough members that when you plan an event, you can get enough people to come to make us a, a successful event out of it. You know, life is busy and it's, it's hard to get everybody to come to something, but we have enough members with horses that usually any event we plan, we're going to have a pretty good turnout. So. These groups don't just happen, do they? They take no, a little bit of work. No, they take a lot of work, you know. And, uh, but the guys are, you know, real good about coming and helping with any event we have. Uh, um, a lot of the stuff like this event right here would be an ungodly amount of work. Uh, I'm glad all I had to do was worry about us calling a few Teamsters to come up and, and bring their wagons and teams. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of work going on to put on a horse event. If, if you go to a, the Iowa State Fair and watch Draft Horses show, and you think, boy, I'm interested in that, I'd like to get into that. Well, you don't just go to a sale and start buying horses, and, and you need a mentor of some kind to keep you from getting killed. So <laughs> I think that's the value of our club. And uh, we, we put on a clinic twice a year and always get a few new people that, that are interested and want, want to get into it. And it's uh, just a good start. It, uh, more than what we teach them that day, we introduce them to people with horses that they can, uh, you know, get a source, a mentor to. Uh, they would probably be surprised. There's probably a lot of people around them with horses that, that they just don't know about. Uh, we restarted our, our saddle club there in New Virginia. My dad started it in 62 or something. And then it kind of died out, but he was still taking care of the grounds. And I told him one day, because he was getting old, I says, you know, we ought to do something with that ground. Let's, let's put an ad in the paper and see if anybody's interested in, in starting a saddle club again. Well, he, you know, he didn't think they would be, but we uh, put a notice up and had 40 people show up. And that saddle club has just exploded. So something like that, put an ad in the paper, see if there's other interest, or, or if you get online and, and find out if you have a, already have a state association, you might be surprised to find out there's already people in your area that's got horses and that would, would like to get together and, and have an event of some kind. And there's a wide variety of kinds of events that people could Absolutely, you know, there we've got a Mid-Iowa Driving Club. Uh, they have drafts and morgans and all sizes of horses. And they have uh, monthly rides, you know, people who like to trail ride and go on wagon trail type stuff. And they're very active and do a lot of things. And uh, our little club likes to, our emphasis is on the plowing, the farming, stuff like that, threshing bees, that's all we like to do. Uh, the state association is more into the showing and uh, the halter classes, that was the kind of things they've promoted throughout the year. So different associations will lean different ways, but there's a lot of things you can do with your horses once you have them. Well, I just enjoy the old horse farmy things that happened. Uh, when I first got horses and I planted a little corn and picked by hand, I probably picked for 10 years before I ever got into a contest. Uh, so it's just a continuation of that, of, of the history of it. Uh, the corn people, picking people are, are good people too, so, uh, and they enjoy seeing the horses out in the field, so. You brought a team. Yeah. Um, did you also compete yesterday? Yeah, I competed yesterday, and I, I didn't uh, didn't qualify for the nationals, but uh, I think uh, I, I I'm sure I've 
competed 10 times and I've qualified every other year, but this, this wasn't my year, so. <laughs> the corn is a little tough this the year? The corn was a little tough, yeah. They, um, when they set up this contest back in the early 30s, I think, or late 20s, it was to teach farmers how to efficiently pick corn. That's when they were still picking corn by hand. So one of the components was to pick the corn clean and to pick all the corn out there. So they not only weigh the corn when you're done, but they have a gleaner that follows the people through the field and they'll grab any uh, corn that a guy misses and they take off a three pounds for every pound you leave in the field. And then they'll take a 20 pound sample of, of what you pick and clean all the husk off of it and they weigh that and then they'll deduct you a percentage of your total weight by how dirty you pick, how many husks you leave on. And when it's tough picking like this, you got green corn and wet corn, that can add up really quick. I think we had a guy yesterday ended up with a negative, negative amount of pounds at the end of the day once they got their deductions in. So You know, this is about keeping history alive. Um, this is how it was began. I mean, truly, that's what our t-shirts say and the shirts we're selling over there. This is how it all began. It didn't start with $350,000 combines. It started with a team of horses or mules and a person that drove their team out into the field. They'd get out of the wagon, they'd pick their corn. They had to feed their hogs, their cattle, they had to feed their family. So that's how it all worked. There wasn't the tractors. We started with horses and mules and that's how it all began. That's why I'm keeping history alive. This is volunteer. Um, we've got a committee of probably no more than 12, maybe 13 people at the most. The judges and gleaners are normally our FFA 4-H kids. A lot of them had uh, other things they had to do today. So the other pickers, you ask for a judge and a gleaner, they step up. The draft horse folks, they volunteer their time and their effort and their money to come help us put this on. We couldn't do this event, as far as I'm concerned, without the draft horse guys and gals. Corn's pretty wet. It was a late planting, about three weeks late planting. Um, it's pretty green, as in the corn's dry and ready to go, but Still a lot of moisture content. Does that mean that maybe somebody that might have been a favorite if it would have been really dry corn might not be quite the favorite this year? It's That's exactly right. Just set. because of the fact that the, the, the husk are wet, they're a little wetter, they haven't dried, so it's harder taking the husk off. And the husk is a deduction. The overall opportunity or the decision to pick clean corn, which is no husk, corn you didn't leave in the row, corn you didn't throw on the ground and didn't pick up. That's wasted corn. The most pounds of clean corn gets first, second, third place. <laughs> they all look alike, don't they? We have the Teamsters come out with their horses and wagons. We also have gleaners and judges that follow along behind the picker. The gleaner will check every stock, make sure there is no ear on that stock. And then also the judge, he has a, he has a timer, and he will judge the ear whether it goes into the bag or not, and he will time the individual who is picking 
and from 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minute pick. So if it's a good quality ear that's left on the stock, it goes in the bag? Yes, it goes in junk? the bag. If it's junk, it gets thrown away. But if it's a good quality ear of four inches, or they say palm width, and corn from the bottom to the top, all the way around, it'll be judged against you. And also in the gleaning bag, one pound counts three against you. So you do not want anything left on that stock because it'll be judged against you. I'm a volunteer, I compete in the, in the games too. Did you compete yesterday, are you from Iowa? I'm from Iowa, yes I did compete yesterday. How'd it go? It went well, it went well. Good, did you qualify for today? Yes, I did qualify for today. So you'll be going this afternoon? Yes. Okay, great. And in the afternoon, um, are they by age divisions or is it by how you scored on your, your state competition? It is by age, uh, it is also by how you scored. Uh, you have to be in the top three in the divisions to pick. First, second, and third will be picking today from nine different states. There's close to 125 pickers today. And it takes a little bit to get them all through. How long have you been doing this? How many years have you been doing this? I've been doing this since 77. No kidding. So it's a, is it a family thing? Did your parents do it? My dad has been national and state of Iowa Cornhusker comp, champion. Uh, his name is Joe Anholt. In 1986, he went to uh, Oakley, Kansas, and he picked 900 some odd pounds, and he came out with 923 pounds and some ounces, and he's held, held the uh, national record for the most poundage picked in 30 minutes till today. Wow! So people are trying to beat that. And they probably won't with this corn today. Probably. Not with this corn. This corn is very uh, green yet. Um, it's too bad. I need timers and gleaners. We can't control nature. Why is this kind of an event important, do you think? It's to keep history alive. Back when my dad was in his, well, even before his teenage years, he had to go out with his two horses and pick corn. It was mandatory. When he got older, uh, he would go and hire out to other farm places and pick corn and he would make five cents a bushel and he would pick 90 bushel in the morning and 90 bushel in the afternoon and when he was putting sideboards on his wagon his dad came to him and said you're just wasting the lumber he says dad I gotta pick and so he would go out and fill it up from I imagine before sun up until noon the funny thing is, they live close to a town, and the noon whistle would go off, and the horse's ears would go up, and they would stop, turn, and head for the farm. It was just pretty funny. That's then he would story. change out teams and go back out after dinner. That's the idea. You take a sampling of 40 pounds, and you see how clean it is? Yep. yep. And then the percentage uh, of us left, they weigh it by a tenth of the gram to see what in there. So much, however, percent you have, and it deducts all your total. You know what the penalty is? You have to talk ladies there, they do all that. It's a sliding scale, though. Percentage of your load. Yeah, I want to. Somebody had negative pounds yesterday? Yes. Negative six pounds. This is very tough to cut. Yeah, that's right here. Here we go. Take a slide. Take a 30 minute. Came from down there where they were camping and they were all lined up all the way through there 
and just it was almost like a parade. All the horse wagons just came out and went to all their lands. It was nice. very you never know what you're gonna historical in that. My wife and I went to. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. 
Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.